Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer and I fell for it. I'm a victim of the Sony hype. I bought the A6700 and in this video I'd like to talk about that. I know exactly what some of you are thinking. You are thinking, Matti, just a couple of videos ago you told us that you don't want to be labeled as a Sony shooter. And now you are bragging about this new Sony camera that you bought, yet another Sony camera. How can you, with a straight face, claim not to be a Sony shooter and at the same time you keep buying more and more Sony products? Please let me explain. I've been looking for another video camera, let's say B camera for my YouTube video productions. I had the Sony ZV-1, which I still think is a great little camera, but the problem is that it is not that great for my video work. It is still a great camera, for example, for travel uh, use, for travel photography, travel video. It offers excellent image quality in a very, very small package. A very nice camera. But I originally bought it for vlog type of video or outdoor video, videos that I shoot film outside and I also wanted to be able to do or shoot film a vlog type of video where I'm holding the camera like this. And for this purpose the lens is simply not wide enough. And on top of that there's a significant uh, crop in 4K mode and on top of that there's even more crop if you turn on the active stabilizer. So in the end it did not really work the way I thought it would work for my video production. I had a pile of gear, a couple of cameras and some lenses that I was not using enough or that I was not really happy with. And I gave that pile in exchange for this and ended up spending very little uh, cash, which is great. And the ZV-1 was also in that pile of gear that I traded in and uh, I still only have only two Sony cameras. This one and the Sony A7 Mark IV that I'm using right now to film this video. I'm really happy that I got rid of all those cameras and lenses that I was not using and I'm happy that I now have something that I hope I can use more. I was looking for better video quality, that was my first priority. And I was also looking for wider lenses for this type of video that I occasionally do. I've been shooting this type of video also on my GoPro, which is a fantastic little camera. And in bright light the video quality is really good and the stabilizer is superb of course. But as soon as the light levers drop, the video quality suffers. I've never heard any complaints from you. Uh, you seem to like that GoPro footage, but to me it doesn't look that great. And if I don't like my the way my video looks, it's, it's not good. And I wanted something that uh, makes better looking video and I hope this is the camera. My good friend Robin Wong has a similar setup for his uh, vlog type of videos and I think his vlog type of videos look really good. Uh, his setup is Micro Four Thirds, of course, he has an Olympus camera body and the Lumix 9mm uh, wide-angle prime lens. And I wanted something similar, but I wanted to have the Sony E mount because I already have the Sony A7 Mark IV. I wanted to have the same mount and the same battery too. And by the way, I'll put link for uh, Robin's channel down below just in case you have never heard of him. I think I forgot to mention what lens this is. This is the Sony 11mm f1.8 APS-C wide-angle prime lens. It's very compact, optically really nice, weather sealed and whatnot. And it's wide enough even for this type of video. Uh, even if I turn on the active stabilizer on this camera which crops the picture slightly. When this camera first came out, some weeks ago I was watching some videos here on YouTube. I wanted to know what this camera can do. I wanted to have some sort of coverage of the features and uh, some first impressions. But that was quite a funny experience, not necessarily fun but funny. There were basically two types of videos. I'm exaggerating slightly of course. Number one, 
those hype videos that said this is the best camera ever, best camera in the universe. Number two, some sort of anti-hype videos that were trying to find as many reasons as possible not to buy this camera. And then there are some videos that contemplate whether you should wait for the A7C Mark II. But that is a moot point, in my opinion, because if you need your camera now, like I, I needed my camera now and not in two months, and also the A7C Mark II will be a full-frame camera, it's gonna be much more expensive than this, and I don't think it's a, a real-world option for this anyway. I understand some of the hype around this camera because this is the first A6000 series camera for a long time, I think for four years or so, but uh, some of those videos were really over the top, and it was kind of difficult to find a neutral coverage, and in my opinion, Chris and Jordan on Petapixel channel and Gordon Lang on his channel, they did the best job in covering the camera in a pretty neutral way and not over-hyping or under-hyping the camera. There are probably some other good videos too, but I haven't seen all videos about this camera, of course. So do I think this is the best camera in the universe? Certainly not. It has some features that I wanted. It has the same mount as my Sony a7 Mark IV. It has the same battery. So there are a lot of advantages for me. But for example, the new Fuji X-S20 that I have not uh, been able to try, but uh, that camera seems like a really nice hybrid camera for both photos and videos. But uh, Fuji for me is out of the question because my main camera is the Sony a7 Mark IV and I, like I said many times already, I want the same mount, the same battery and all that. And with this camera I can also get exactly the same look in my videos as I get with my a7 Mark IV. So those uh, video clips are interchangeable and indistinguishable when I edit them, so that's also a big bonus. As you can see, many of my priorities with this camera are video related, but of course I will also use this for photography. And there are so many cool, nice, native APS-C lenses available for Sony these days. Sony have released some really nice primes lately, this lens included, and there are so many third-party options popping up all the time. And I also have this G, Sony G 24mm f2.8 full-frame lens that I have hardly used. I bought this lens originally for video when I bought my Sony a7C, but I have not really used this lens that much even for video and hardly at all for photography because 24mm on a full-frame is too wide to my taste. But with this camera, this 24mm gives me a really nice 36mm equivalent lens for street photography, for example. I tried it already briefly and I'm very, very happy with the results. I really like these Sony G-series prime lenses. They are compact, sharp, well-built, weather-sealed and whatnot. And they have the nicest aperture ring too. Very nice series of lenses and I hope that Sony makes more of these in the future. So this is definitely not the best camera on the planet, but it's still a very nice camera and a big upgrade for Sony APS-C users. It gets many things right. I'm not too crazy about the viewfinder. It's kind of small and hard to see, especially with glasses. And it could have higher resolution. But in the end, it's not that big of a deal to me because I'll be using the screen most of the time anyway. Some reviewers have also complained the lack of joystick, but I don't think a joystick is necessary because the way the Sony autofocus works, you really don't need a joystick for that anyway. So far, I'm very happy with my new Sony A6700 camera. It seems to do all the things that I want from it but I have very little real-world experience so far with this camera. And the next few weeks will tell whether this will really work for me or not. I hope it will work. 
This is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little Sony topic in this video. And if you did, please do consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thank you so much and I'll definitely see you in the next video.